nets, and then all the neighbors would help to pull in the nets. It was amazing to see the amount of fish that were in these nets. And so when the when all that fish came up on the <coughs> on the seashore, then all of the neighbors all brought in their bags. So they got up there, they filled up their bags, and they went home. Of course, what they would do is, <coughs> excuse me, they would load up the, the trucks so that the, they would be able to take the fish and bring it to home. You take it to Honolulu to be sold. Now, from my understanding, you read in um, in some of the books that Tuchapalamoa, he was regarded as a very kind man, a very giving man, a very yeah, he's a, just he's a big heart and that he he used to take the fish from the hukilaus and he would go and give fish to some of the kapuna who couldn't yeah. even fish for themselves or didn't have any ohana left. Yes, he always and he would give a fish a boy. He always was, he was yeah. always willing to give. As his, as his as his lifetime, you know, he never did go back. And he passed that on to his boys and and your mother, as well. Now, what was um, what was Papa Aina like? If you guys want to talk about same thing. any was, of your uncles, yeah, aunties, everybody, the family was oh, always the same. Yeah, yeah. See, actually, my dad was the, after two small more passed on. My dad took over control <laughs> over the mothers. He was the leader, yep. and he was the one that tells what goes on. That's why when, when, when he continued the fishing and whatever he, he had to do, he always notified the brothers that he's going up to the mountain, he's going to get up there, and then he give them a signal to let them know when he needs the help. He whistle. He was, no, he get, he get different style. He do get, a bell. He give them a flag. <laughs> the, like uh, your grandpa used to work with us on the tarot patch. So we all stay in the tarot patch, all us kids down in the tarot patch, and this guy's father, his dad, all the people from Aula, they're not working regular jobs, they're in the tarot patch with us. You know, because that's how we raised the neighborhood over there. Papa Aina made sure that everyone, no matter no, what, Papa were Kioni. working. Kioni. Papa Kioni did. Oh. Papa Aina had, had his own job at the, the city and county. Yeah. So he was doing a park. how did Papa um, Papa Aina and, and Puni and Pua and and Keone and Alale how did they get along? Did they did they get along well? Did they only three of them? Four of them got along well. Uh -oh. One was the raptor, Puni oh. Kala. He was, <laughs> he was the, he was the, now now you know we have people named after you, yeah. so yeah. don't scare them. <laughs> well, Alale Moors. <laughs> I was telling, I was telling the guy, uh, I used to drive a motorcycle up in the in the house, 19 stairs, 10th Avenue. Was he lazy? He just wanted to get no, upstairs. No, he's not lazy. He's he coming. He just coming home drunk. <laughs> and he tell, he tell your grandma, open the door. All the keys on the back side of the house, out the door. They know what's coming. The motorbike on the 10th Avenue. Blah. And boom, went to the house. I saw you got all show me, he's telling you get I said you just like your brother. He told me get stitches from the model bike or something, yeah, that's it. Now Punakala, he never got married, never had no, any he children. A, he was a bachelor. <coughs> he was the bachelor. Bachelor. Yeah. Oh. He never got married. He was not married. <coughs> never got married, huh? Any reason why he just? <coughs> he was a happy go lucky. He could drink. Oh, party. He's a party. He's a party man then. <laughs> then he come home all drunk, to grumble with his brothers. And did, he, did he live by himself or? Yeah, he played sing to his dog. You know, him and his dog. He was a character then. How was uh? What was uh? Papa Aina like as a person? Uh, no, 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 no. just you know. So only only uh only uh only Chicho Lale and Puni were and Puni was the But a Lale was a Chicho Lale, my great grandfather. He was a a lineman, wasn't he? And I found him listed. He was a lineman. Yeah, he was. Oh. 
Yeah, I don't know the this yeah. way. He he was put that, you remember the way kind of here in the mountain? Yeah. My yeah. father law put that up. Yeah. He was on top of the mountain. He put all that up, huh? Yeah. Was he a troubleshooter as well? He'd go and make sure the if there's something went wrong with the line, he'd go and fix yeah. it. How long did you work for HRC? Uh, no, that's Hawaiian Electric. Oh, Hawaiian Electric. How long did you work for them? I don't know. I think when after he got got that job done, then he gave up. Then he went to uh, Honolulu River Texas bus. Then he was the electrician for them. For many years, no, huh? He was working with HRT. He was working yeah, HRT. On the line, because my father was the foreman. Yeah. And he was one. Yeah. He worked. And, and Papa Aina, what did he do? Park keeper. He was a park keeper. The, the park keeper. So he did that his whole life? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. He, he retired. He retired from the park. But then he come, you know. Oh, in those days, you know, the city calling, they don't grumble too much if you go out help your family, you know. Even though you're getting paid, yeah, but you still can go, go, go out with your family. So when, when we see the, my dad see the school fish, yeah. he called, he need help, he called him, he come. And we catch a fish, then you go back to work. Yeah. You know, and then the rest of the boys take care of the job. You know, put everything together. Everyone. Did they? Did your um, your fathers or any of your guys' parents ever go hola hola over to the mainland, or did they all just mainly stay stay home? No, it was no, mostly you guys mostly that. Stay, stay. Now I know, Auntie Lily, you are listed on Passenger Manifest. I have dating back to like boy, 1930s. I want to say maybe 1940s. And you were on a couple ships coming to, I think, San Francisco or San Diego. Do you used to entertain on ships? No, no, no. Were you just traveling? I, I, I belong to the Royal Hawaiian Girls. We, huh. And so we danced at the Royal Hawaiian and, and Moana. And for six months, I danced in um, New York at the Hotel Six Beaches. They had a Hawaiian masonette. So I danced there. Was that the first time you ever came to the mainland? Yes. Do you remember what it was like? Well, it certainly was very different. I was the only one that did not have, that did not belong to the union. And when they found out that I did not belong to the union, they came to me and said, the union people came to me and said, if you don't join the union here, we'll close down the hotel. I had no choice. I had to join the union. Now you guys... We're back in the days when the unions were oh, taking over everything yes. and going strong. How was back that? What was that like? It was very, um, the unions were very strong. The, because we, I went up with Al Luis and his boys. And because Alma's group went out, out of the hotel to play, they did, did not, uh, what's that? famous woman. <clears throat> well, anyway, they, they, there were two families that came to Hawaii every year. So, and Elma always played for them. So when we were in New York, well, one was in New York and the other one was uh, in, in New Jersey and they wanted them to go up to their homes to play, so we did. Well, that's why they had to leave. The union wouldn't State. So your first they trip? They had to, yeah, that's the first, they had to go home. So they, we, they just organized another group from the Hawaiian uh, entertainers that was 